Uh, and my name is Natalia Nakazawa. I am the assistant director for the studio program. I've been here a little bit over eight years uh, and it's been a very fruitful tuition or uh, tenure of time. And I've been very happy to be able to work with a, a range of artists. We have again, 90 artist studios in the building. So it's, it's quite a vast program. It's one of the bigger programs, I think if not the biggest program uh, in the city and um, it's a competitive process to get in. We have uh, every, every year we have an open call, which you were all here for, which is called the new member uh, application. And, you know, we get, usually we receive hundreds of applications and uh, it's again, a very competitive process. I anticipate it going, it will be similar this year, but again, We'll see what happens as uh, people have left the city and different things have changed. So um, I'm very excited. I will show you, let's see, the studio program. So as you go to our website, this is the studio program website. You can see studios.efa-efanyc.org. Um, we have our own kind of section of the website. And here you can find um, our studio application you can also view our current member artists in the building. Um, and uh, you know, generally speaking, we have around 75 um, regular members who come in through this juried process. Uh, and the, you know, the applications, this one ends in December, December 15th. Um, and then new members are notified and accepted um, in May. So it is kind of a, a long period of time uh, in between, you know, applying and actually being able to come in and get a studio. Uh, so right now we have, Bill, what's the total number of member artists that we have right now? We, well, right now we're down, we've had a number of artists uh, leave because of Corona because they couldn't get to the studio. So I think we're down to about 67. 67. So generally speaking, we have bet anywhere between 70 and 75. Right now we have fewer because of coronavirus. And again, that has impacted the studio program. We have seen uh, more people leave for different reasons. Um, that being said, we're really happy to say that the majority of the studios are filled and that you know people are coming to use their studios. Um, everybody has 24 hour access to their studios. They are private studios. And because they are private studios, we have been able to allow people to come back into the studio building and use their spaces. They ha everybody has to sign a mandatory coronavirus contract that specifies social distancing and mandates masks and uh, hand sanitizing throughout the building and you know, agreement that you will not come into the building if you have any symptoms, et cetera. So we are taking precautions there. The lobby is you know, a very safe place. We have um, hand sanitizers and everybody's signing in and signing out so we can do contact tracing. Um, so just so you know, the building, we really do take this very seriously and we are taking precautions, just so you know. Um, hopefully by May, when this next group would come in, which is May 2021, by then per perhaps there will be um, vaccines that will be out and I'm hoping that maybe there'll be some progress, but you should, you should anticipate that anybody coming into the building in May will still have to adhere to the coronavirus contract um, and protocols meeting everyone will be continuing to social distance and wearing masks, et cetera. So uh, the building is not closed, but we, we are absolutely um, taking all precautions that we can to ensure safety. Um, okay, so here you can see, if you go to the website and you click on artists, you can see the range of um, art, like you know the type of work that uh, people are producing in the building which is truly a wide range of artwork. So we have sculptors, we have painters, we have fabric and textiles artists, we have video artists, we have uh, you know, sort of more figurative painters, abstract painters, we have installation artists. 
Um, so truly there is no limitation if you're asking yourself, I'm a sound artist, can I apply? Or I'm, I'm an installation artist, can I apply? You can absolutely apply, this is the place for you. The only sort of like caveat that we have is that if you need something like, uh, you need to use large industrial tools, uh, like chainsaws, for instance, or something like that this is not maybe the place for you. But if you are working in any other kind of range of media from, from paint again to sculpture, video, uh, photography, um, you know, I, I would invite you all to, to examine the artists that we've had in the program up to this point to kind of get an idea of, um, you know, who's already in the program. So here we go. Again, wonderful, wonderful artists. Uh, they're all fantastic. Um, you can also see if you want to check out some of the alumni. Um, oh, back in artists. You can also look at the, our alumni page. Um, and we've had uh, some illustrious alumni um, come through the building. So you can take a look at that. Um, as part of, let's see, as part of the, I'm going to click on this. Um, the studio program, we not only provide um, studio space that has a 24 hour access, but we also have uh, professional development initiatives such as the Visual Visiting Professionals Project, where we invite um, professionals from around the art world uh, to come and do studio visits with our artists. We've had uh, Solana Chetman, who's the director at The Shed, uh, Jane Panetta, we've had Laurel Potak. I mean, we've had like a wonderful range of artists, uh, of curators, critics, um, and, and artists actually, um, who um, sort of permeate all aspects of the art world. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success making connections between, um, you know, the, the critics who come and visit and then the artists. So potentially, you know, leading to exhibitions or other opportunities in the future. So that's been really fantastic. So you can check that out. Um, also something that's part of the, uh, once you receive the studio program uh, membership, um, the other thing that we do is we do a major open studios event. Um, this past year, we had to do it virtually but uh, it worked out in, in some ways beautifully. We were uh, still able to connect artists to the community, to the uh, greater art world. There was a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one studio visits done virtually. There were panel discussions, there were programs. So we were able to do quite a lot. Um, so if you missed that for whatever reason, I also invite you to come check out this page. There are links to a bunch of, um, uh, you can actually see all this stuff in video form um, on our YouTube page, and I believe there's some links that connect you to that. So this is this is just sort of to give you an overview of like what's include like what is membership at the um, you know the EFA Studio Program. What does that entail? And so it's not just a single studio space that you're able to occupy and use, but it really is being part of the larger EFA community and um, having all of the benefits professional opportunities um, and the ability to, again, like share your work with the broader audience or broader community, um, which is, makes it so exciting and so lovely. Um, okay, so I'm going to dive a little bit into, because my plan is to talk for about another maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then I, I really will open it up to questions because I know that it being this, uh, that it's an info session, you all have a lot of questions. So um, if you could just bear with me for the next like 10 to 12 minutes, then we'll, we'll go into questions. Um, okay, so here it is, the thing you have all been waiting for. Um, this is the, the new membership application. Uh, you can see that the current deadline is December 15th. I don't think we will extend it, but we have extended it in the past. Uh, but you know, this is pretty much the, the hard deadline at this point. Um, uh, the application is a simple click away. So you just click on this link to actually apply. But before you click on this link, you might wanna read through 
the application process, which just gives you, again, and uh, kind of puts into your headspace the, the timeline of the application, because it's not like you apply and then it's you, you immediately get in. There's, there's, it's kind of a lengthy process. Um, and it also gives you spe uh, specifics about the sizes of our studio spaces. And this is, again, really important if you're an artist who works with uh, a very large scale, you want to make sure that um, you're looking at um, you're looking at the sort of uh, sizes of the studio spaces and, and making sure that it's a good fit for you. Um, so we have, you know, generally speaking, very high ceilings, so that does help. Um, we have, and then you can see some of the uh, ranges of the studio fees. There are studio fees. So because it's a, we're a nonprofit, so we're a 501c3 nonprofit charity. So that means that all of the studio spaces in the building are subsidized. I mean, you're not paying a standard market rate. You're paying a below market rate that is subsidized depending on your income. So the reason why there's a range of cost is because those people who demonstrate need through um, submitting their tax information, we provide a higher level of subsidy, meaning that you pay less because we subsidize the studios more. So, um, you know, there's always a range. It's taking it's income based and it's needs based. So, if you know that is something to consider to, uh, you know, how much you can afford financially. So that's something to consider. We also have an eighty dollar monthly dues. And the dues is just um, a, a flat fee that covers a sort of a, a little a little bit towards administrative costs. So everybody will have a fee, which is a regular monthly cost, and then a due, which is a repeating another repeating monthly cost. So these are the two type of prices that you'll have to become familiar with. Um, every floor we have again floors three through ten. Currently um, are where you will find the studios. So on the second floor, we have the gallery space, it's called the project space. And then we have the Robert Blackburn printmaking workshop. So we have two spaces on the second floor. The first floor is the lobby. The second floor are those two spaces. And the third floor um, is the EFA studio program office and additional studios. So we have studios, uh, again, from the third floor to the 10th floor. And on each of the floors, we have kitchens, we have sinks, we have slop sinks, we have both regular sinks and slop sinks um, on pretty much every single floor. We have bathrooms. Uh, so it's really, it's a beautifully done building. Um, artists are very comfortable and um, you have access to it 24 seven. Uh, pretty much any uh, anybody is allowed to apply. Our application is free of cost, so no one has to pay any fees to apply. And it is as long as you are 25 years or older that you are allowed to apply. So anybody under 25 years, um, it's that is not a, an age that we accept at this point. Um, we also you can also not be currently enrolled in a in a degree granting program. So for instance, if you were finishing up at Columbia and you're graduating in May, that's fine, but you cannot be still enrolled by the time you would come into the building. So by May, 2021, you have to be out of a degree granting program, if that makes sense. Um, so, the only thing about uh, you, you don't need to necessarily be a citizen of the US, but you do need to have legal residence here. So you need to, again, because this is a two year fellowship, so it's a two year residency, um, because it, it lasts two years, you need to actually have demonstrated that you can, you can stay for those two years or just give us an idea of your ability to be in this country. Um, so what's in the application? What besides who can apply and some of the cost and description of the studios? Um, 
we're going into some of the requirements. So how do you actually apply? As I mentioned before, it is a free process. So that what's great is that it's totally free. And I highly encourage you to, if you have uh, friends or other people that you know, or students perhaps that you think um, that are graduating that might want to apply, please pass this information along. We invite everyone to apply. Um, what is required for the application? Um, you will need to have 10, you can have a, a, either a 10 images or three minutes of video. You cannot have 10 images plus three minutes of video. So it really is an either or. What I generally say is if you are a sound artist, an installation artist, a time-based artist of any sort, that you select the three minute video. The three minute video can be a compilation of multiple projects. It just cannot have your name on it. So there cannot be any descriptors, like it can have the name of the project, but it cannot have your name anywhere in the video. So what the three minute video, you would upload it, you can make it a private video if you want, upload it to YouTube or Vimeo, and you submit the link and the password for the three minute video submission. For the work sample, for the 10 image work sample, it's pretty straightforward. You just have JPEGs that um, we, we do have a sort of maximum size for the JPEGs that you can submit, which is a thousand pixels, pixels in any um, direction. So that's the optimal size for projection and for fast upload and to not crash our systems. So, um, and again, some basic naming strategies here. Um, so that's, that's the deal with, um, let's see, that's the deal with naming here. Um, no captions. And again, I've had to, in the past, really, um, you know, I've not been able to accept certain applications because there were like people's names all over images. Do not put your name on the image. Um, it is an anonymous panel. So names are, are not allowed. Um, and again, here's some, some tips about submitting a video. Uh, you must have a URL or a link, meaning you're not submitting a file, you're submitting a link. So that means you have to have already uploaded it to, again, Vimeo or YouTube. Um, so a little note about privacy settings and how to do that. We will only watch three minutes. So if you submit something that's 20 minutes long, 30 minutes long, we will only watch three minutes, the first three minutes. Um, so, and I, I have a little information about how you might go about doing that. Um, an image list that goes along with the, um, the image submissions, which it tells you again, the title, the date, medium, you will be prompted, so you don't have to create your own image list in advance. You will be prompted to do this. Uh, your resume, please no more than uh, two pages. Like we don't want 10 page resumes. This is more important than you think. This 250 words description of your work can really make or break the process. Um, it oftentimes we have had you know, two or three incredibly powerful uh, artists, uh, you know, work or work samples, and we need to figure out which of these, you know, three or four artwork samples, like how to decide between them. And I think that people often kind of breeze through their explanation of work, but I think the more connected and the more revealing and the more again, relevant, um, you can make that explanation of work. It really does matter, we do read it. Um, as, long, as well as your resume, we do read the resume. Um, okay, so a little bit about the process. There are really three, three phases of the application. So currently we're in phase one. So phase one is the open call and review of submissions. So you know, at like at, in December 15th, when we close our application, that's the end of round one. So, or phase one. Um, 
So hopefully by the end of, by December 15th, we'll have, you know, several hundred applications. They'll all be very good quality. Um, I'm checking and reviewing as they come in. I'm just making sure that you've submitted everything that makes sense, that we have all the data we need, um, that we're not getting incomplete applications. So I'm reviewing them as they're coming in, but um, they're not without any final decision making, just sort of like making sure that the information is there. Um, I do when I can, if something is like, I can tell a file was corrupted or there was something technical. If I have time, I will let you know that that is the case and ask you to send another image, but it's, it's not a guarantee, but I do what I can to ensure a high quality of applications. Um, so then, and then phase two, again, uh, finalists and alternates after we have our a uh, new member panel. We have a panel of five. Um, and th this is another reason to apply because we have five arts professionals that come and review all of these applications. I have known many um, panels in the past where maybe a panelist sees an artwork or a something, an artist, and they're like, oh my gosh, I love this work but maybe they're not selected as a final recipient of the membership, but they will write that person's name down. They will you know, make sure that they're following up with that person. So please apply. It's like, it's one of those things where every single time I'm amazed, people really have a range of um, interests and you never know if you're that person that will fit with the uh, panelists' interests. So please apply, because it really, it really is a great opportunity to get the eyes of very talented, amazing um, arts professionals. Um, so, and then we announce who the panelists are when the um, selected members are announced. So um, after, after the sort of panel is conducted, we will have finalists and alternates. So finalists are people that we're inviting right away to come uh, do interviews and check out the studios. And alternates, if, you, if you're if you made an alternate, never feel bad because alternates are often called upon because sometimes it is the case that a finalist is given another job or another opportunity comes up and they're not able to accept the um, the membership. So we really do use our alternates often. And our alternates are usually just other incredible artists that, you know, it's it's a tricky business to try to rank everybody. So, um, you know, it's it's really amazing if you can get into either the finalist or, or alternate section. And then once uh, everyone comes in for interviews, selects their studios, then it's moving. And so by that point, it's either May or June and people are starting to move in. So it is quite a, a lengthy process, but a really, I think a pretty efficient one and a great one. So um, here you can see again, the, the, I'm just gonna quickly click on the application itself. It is done through submittable. So hopefully you all have submittable accounts already, but if you don't, what I love about Submittable is it's also, it's also kind of like a social media or a social kind of sharing platform. So you can often look for other opportunities um, right there on Submittable. Um, and all this information again is written there. Um, so it's very, it's, I think I, I really like Submittable. Um, let's see, oh, and here's our FAQ. Okay, so, and, and if you have any kind of general, this one says November 3rd, I need to change that because that was our old deadline. Um, if you have some, you know, questions, again, um, about the application that you just need a reminder of, please take a look at our FAQ. Okay, so it's around five, let's see, 27, is there anything else that I did not cover? That's it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stop my sharing. And I'd like to open it up to questions. Um, 
you know, if you are an artist who, you know, if you have any particular questions, if you want to write your question in the chat, you don't want to say it out loud, that's fine too. Um, you know, please ask me any questions that you have at this point. Hi, I have a question. Hi. Do you hear me? Hi. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm usually uh, very uh, neglectable. I don't know. I'm neglecting some explanation about my work. I mean, I, I see that because you said that this is really important. Yes. And I always thought, okay, I, I have the artist statement, you know, like, uh, and I try to like put everything that is more impor most important in the art uh, artist statement. And I don't really explain about uh, like each image. And you think that this is really important, yeah? Like, like to explain in each image, uh, what is it, what, 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 what the idea behind, and also the technique and how I, I've done this. I mean, what's your tip about that? I mean, how to explain the, each image, even though that it's the, the whole series, for example, and it's like around the same subject, I would say. I think that the most successful uh, sort of written, um, explanations have been like images one through three address this project. So, um, you know, okay, so address... I don't repeat myself all the time. Yes. Right. So I think that the most mm -hmm. uh, like sort of successful ones have just mentioned, um, you know, they're not like going each individual image because you don't have that much space to talk about it, to write about it, because we're not accepting 3000 word essays. These are 250 words, which is not that much space. It's actually very short, but it's more like a few sentences about the body of work that you have submitted. So, uh, and somebody else asked, um, is it better if you have 10 images, which is not that many images, is it better to submit just one body of work or several bodies of work? Again, my just submitting one body of work over 10 images, I don't think is enough. I think you need like two to three sort of different projects or, you know, whatever you're doing, but um, it's, it, it is, it's 10 images. So it has to make an impact and it has to tell a story. So oftentimes if you're, again, if you're, if you've done a major outdoor installation, maybe you do spend two to three images, you know, on that major installation. If it's like a really juicy thing that you want to share, but, um, you know, I do think people run into an issue where there's too many images and it's like, it's, it's kind of like a fragmented description of your work. And so, you know, people are saying, oh, the little piece of paper that this person did, and now we're in an outdoor installation and it's concrete, and now we're digging holes, and now we're in a video space. That might be a tough sell, sell because it's, it's a little hard to track what you're doing. So even though all of us are incredibly prolific and have a lot of range in our practice, you may want to direct the sort of storytelling of your practice and keep it narrowed down. Let's say you are somebody who works um, in a kind of a, a, a responsive manner between video and textiles, let's say, you know, having a couple of images of the textiles you produced and then the responsive, you know, some stills of your videos that you've created with those textiles that are collaged or whatever, that would be one argument over 10 images. Does that make sense? So it's not like you, but at the same time, you don't want to have, let's say you've done one major installation and you do 10 images of that one installation that's not enough information. So it does, it's, it's not like a, um, there's no exact formula, but I would, you know, I encourage you all to show images to, you know, other colleagues and professionals and say, can you understand what this says? Because it, sometimes you get so caught up in the narrative and you think you know what you're saying and you have actually, you're not being clear. So I think that um, it's really important, again, not to get caught up in the nitty gritty, but making sure that you are being clear in your storytelling. This, like, I'm an artist that responds to eco, you know, centric concerns. This is the earth in my work. These are like the materials, you know, that kind of stuff, like speaking a little bit more pragmatically about the connection 
of your materials, to your work, to your themes, that is really helpful because we don't know necessarily your work. So it's really helpful to just be a little pragmatic and get other people to read your stuff. Okay, I'm looking at the questions because there's a bunch of questions in here. Um, yeah, so you don't need to spend time talking about being part of the EFA community in your 250 words. Really use that to explain your work. So we're in there looking at your work samples and the way that people that are invited to become part of the program is based on your work alone. So we're not interested in like, um, you know, I have been on many other panels where we're trying to see if the artist is a good fit because they're leading educational programming or because they're doing something else. That is not the case here. The case here is that we are just looking at your work and trying to understand you as an artist. So your statement should pertain to the images that, and the videos that you have submitted. Okay, that is a good question. Um, okay, if you do not, let's see. Do you recommend submit 10 images of a body or of work or a selection of different works? Okay, I think we, we went over that, which is, you know, even if you have like two bodies of work or three bodies of work, so you have like textiles, video and collages, you know, that you do two to three images of each of those bodies of work, as long as you can show a through line between them, I think that that's a very strong grouping. Um, if you do not have a landlord, what other financial reference is acceptable? I mean, we have used, um, you know, some people own property, so then they're, you know, showing bank statements Ooh. or um, there, there's other ways to, to share that. I've never had, I've never had that be like a super big issue. If you don't have a landlord because you're either, um, mm -hmm. you're a homeowner or you're living at home. Uh, I've had, uh, somebody's parent actually <laughs> wrote a letter in the past. I mean, so there's ways that we can figure it out. And I think that don't worry about the financial stuff. This you know, not until the second part. Let's see. Um, regarding the 10 images, do you prefer a straightforward, clean white background with nothing but the work? Do you want to see the gallery views or audience engagement shots with people or collaborations? This is up to you because I've seen successful sort of images both ways. I think that if you're trying to give a sense of scale or your work is interactive, then yes, you should include people. But if your work, if it's a painting and it's just a painting on a wall, you can include a little bit of the wall around it just so we can get an idea of the object hood and the texture of your work. Like I don't advise cropping in. You want to be able to see some kind of contextual information. So if you have a work on a wall, you want to be able to see a teeny bit of the wall, uh, but you don't need people standing in front of your painting, if that makes sense. Um, but if your work is interactive, please include that makes sense, especially if it's like an earthwork or something else where people are moving around. Um, we do look at the, so this person is asking, do you sometimes look at the applicants websites too? Um, we generally speaking, when we're doing the app, when we're doing the panel, um, we don't look at websites, but if we have a specific question that can't be answered with other contextual information, then we will go to the website. Um, but that being said, we really rely on what you submit. So we're not just like finding you on other sort of websites or sites or Instagram or whatever. It really is just what you submit is what gets shown. Um, Let's see, thank you so much, Rolly. Are there ranges of, for the pricing of studios based off corresponding income ranges? Yes. So everybody would submit their finance, their finances once you're accepted, you will, we don't make anybody do any financial things until the very last moment when, when it looks like, okay, you're either a finalist or an alternate, then you submit your paperwork. So that's a whole nother, like, that's why we describe the three phases. So kind of at this moment, just worry about phase one. The second phase and you know, the third phase or whatever where we're actually doing finances and all of that, um, we've never had a person not be able to come in because 
of uh, paperwork. So like usually we can figure out the paperwork that needs to be there. Um, but it's, it is based, this is a good question. It says, um, is the income based off joint income if you are filing jointly with a spouse? Yes. So what we would do is depending on how many people, like if it's two, the two of you, we split it in two. So we, we, don't, um, we don't say, okay, like if you're filing jointly, if there's no way to kind of break that apart. We just cut it in two and we use that as an estimate. Um, okay, let's see. If you are showing bodies of work that were included in a large installation, do you feel it generally has more impact to see an installation shot or a specific artwork mm -hmm. first? Um, I think, you know, again, when you're building your argument, I mean, I think it's nice to have, if you're going, if you're trying to show us a large installation, start with the installation. That is the artwork. So you have to, especially when you're showing when you're arranging the images, like you, the point is to show us the artwork. So show us what you have first and then show us the detail shots afterwards. Um, let's see. Those are, these are good questions. Can I, can I have a question? Yes. I'm sorry. I, um, okay, let me, let me just turn on. I'm sorry, I, I have a couple of old computers, so I'm working on combinations. Uh, so my question would be uh, that I'm multidisciplinary and I have videos and I definitely would like to show sequences of videos. But at the same time, I also do multimedia and, uh, and digital collage. Can I edit in within the three minutes video sequence. Still um, images? Like a slideshow fashion. Yeah, uh, we've, had, we've had that in the past um, that people submit still images and, and sort of in a slideshow fashion and video. I don't know if it's the best use of your three minutes. I, I oftentimes, like it, if people are putting in slideshows, it kind of gets thrown out by the jury. I've noticed that people, the, jur the panelists don't respond well. No, to I'm, no I'm, I'm not talking about slideshow for three minutes, but oh. you know, just to edit, sorry, I don't know what am I doing wrong here. Uh, just to edit a couple of digital collage in addition to the... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Anna, it was just too much. Would you mind writing your question in the chat? Yeah, just, I, just, I, I don't think we can handle the, the feedback, yeah. unfortunately. Since, I get a, uh, since I'm sat on the jury. Mm. Thing is, it gets confusing. Sometimes people have submitted uh, videos and we're trying to figure out, is it a video or, it, or is, is it just a documentation of the piece? Whatever you do, it's just gotta be really clear. So if you, there's like suddenly a little bit of video and then there's a collage, uh, to me, I think the jury will get very confused as to whether it's, so is this all a video or, remember that happened, that's happened a couple of times to tell you. Yeah. Where, like there was a video and then we couldn't quite figure out. So it's, they're just documenting a sculpture or. Right, and, and actually I think that if you submit video, um, it's hard to submit just documentation. Like uh, if it's a video, that's about the, it's, it's a little, it is a little bit dicey with um, submitting documentation as a video because um, the, it's difficult to tell if the documentation is your artwork, like that's your video work, or if it's documentation of a, an existing sculpture. Um, what we have had in the past that has been successful is documentation of performance. That makes sense. Um, and then we've also had, um, yeah, yeah, artists that are, again, it's a video, but it's clearly a video of a performance. That makes a lot of sense. Or just straight video art, meaning they're using digital collages and various things that it's clearly time-based. Um, or um, what other really successful models? 
I think mostly video art has been very, like people can understand it's video art. You're making a video, like that is clear that the video is the artwork. I think again, when you're using that space as documentation space, it's almost like a waste, you know, like it doc using, using your three minutes of video to document you walking th through, um, to, to like a studio or like walk showing paintings like that that would be thrown out immediately like that would be not accepted um but yes anything that if the video is if that makes sense if if um try not to you know treat it as a documentation space but rather an art space like this is your submission and people just want to see your artwork um, okay, so there's some more really good questions here. Um, one person asked, I need some sort of consistent airflow ventilation for my work. Is a window available in most of the spaces? So we do have north facing and south facing windows. And I would say it's like two thirds of the studios are do have window space. Um, there are internal studios that don't have official windows to the outdoors, but they do have little window spaces that that go into the hallway. And so it makes it feel a little less kind of insular. Um, but the other thing is that we have a, an HVAC system throughout the building. And one of the reasons we've been able to stay open is because all of our studios have air ducts that go directly to the outdoors. So all of the air in your studio, you turn on your air, it is outside air that's coming in. So we are able to maintain um, safety protocols that way, um, for even for internal studios. So everyone has access to fresh air um, within their studios. Um, I had some questions here. How how many pages should your resume be? Please, no more than two pages. If it's like six pages, we're it's just too much, and we're not going to read it. Um, do the jurors change every year? They do indeed change every year, and that's why it's great to keep a fun because you never know who you're going to get. Um, let's see. I feel if I only submit video, half of my work is not presented. That is true, and that's a risk. But we've had um, many artists get in solely based on one video sample, and um, you know, just some artists have not even been able to. Sh you know, there it's it, it's a risky thing, I guess. On one hand, uh, on the other hand, I feel like uh, I've never felt like video didn't have a, sh a fair space. Like I, I've always been like, oh, video does well. Like it's in some ways because it's moving and it's like a very engaging space. If you, I feel like it's on equal footing is what I'm saying. And I don't think that just because you can't show every part of your process, if you have a really strong video or a couple of, you know, short samples of a couple of videos, I think that that's, it's not a bad thing to do. Um, if I have a professional name and a legal name, should I put both or only your professional name? Only put your professional name. We don't need your legal, legal name for the moment. Um, okay, so great question. If COVID restrictions continue for some time after May 21st, 2021, um, how would the visiting professionals aspect of the membership shift or change and how has it worked this year? Luckily, because our um, studios have ventilation and because we have mask wearing protocols and social distancing protocols in place, we have actually been able to conduct studio visits in person um, as long as, you know, people agree to be 10 feet apart from each other, keep the air on and social distance. So it, it's so far we've been able to stay to maintain that component. Um, you know, anything could happen, but thus far we've been able to do that. Um, and generally speaking, I offer both. So if a, an artist is like, I would love to meet with them, but I don't want to meet with them in person, can I ask for a virtual visit? I have 
pitched back to the visiting professionals, would you mind doing both? And uh, I haven't had a no yet. So all of the visiting professionals have agreed to do virtual studio visits with those artists that don't feel safe coming in and also in person for those who feel at least safe, again, maintaining protocols. So it's been, I actually have been pretty proud of that, that we've been able to do that. Um, is there air conditioning for the summers? There is air, there's air conditioning. All of the studios have heat and air conditioning. So those, and again, we have a ventilation system that brings in fresh air into your studio. So, I mean, we have all of the sort of like, you know, state of, state of the art materials and equipment that you need to maintain a, a safe respiratory environment. Um, these are very, you, you all have brought very good questions. I'm really excited. Um, are there any other questions? We have about 10 minutes more, I think, to go over any more pressing questions. Bill, do you have anything you want to add about what's been going on with us so far or what to anticipate for May? Uh, You're good. That was great to tell you. And everybody had really good questions. Uh, no, we've been, you know, we're hanging in there. It's been uh, tricky. We, we, well, the building was closed for three months, which was really tricky because we had no, so all three programs, and as you know, there's two other programs, the Project Space, EFA Project Space and Robert Blackburn Printmaking Workshop. But since we reopened, as I was saying, we have lost, and I think we've lost some artists temporarily, members who just for health reasons really did have to leave the city. And uh, so, uh, and as we were saying, that normally we have 90 studios, uh, some people share, so we always have over hundred artists in the building. Uh, it's really meant for professionals, the artists who are serious, no hobbyists, you know, you, you really have to be taking this uh, seriously. And, uh, but what we do, we also have a program where when we have an empty studio, because the new members came in in May, if somebody leaves during the season, we will uh, rent them out to what we call short term. So we will get artists in at, uh, uh, nobody pays uh, market rate. You know, it, that uh, you were asking about, some, somebody asked about the cost of the studios. So at this point, 60% uh, of the members, so the mem you know, the full membership where you got in through the jury process, uh, it's, there's the $80 dues, which goes of course to the programming, but 60% uh, of the members are paying $2.90 a square foot, which let me tell you, is to be in the middle of Manhattan is, uh, is amazingly. So, so I say it is really affordable. Uh, and we have been managing to keep the studios filled as the members have left. So, uh, I see that's all tricky. And somebody asked about how many uh, studios will be available. Last year we brought in nine new members. It ranges depending on different factors. Uh, again, partly on how many members have left, uh, but we've never brought in less than, I think, how many, I think at least we've ever, I choose usually like between eight and you know 10. It, that, it really ranges, it's usually between eight and 10 new members. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> Um, so we had another question here about, you know, if you have gallery representation outside of the U.S., uh, it doesn't, you know, whether you're represented or not, that is not a consideration in this application. So really, we're looking at your work samples, we're looking at the strength of your voice and vision as an artist, um, and we're looking at your, your literal words, uh, you know, in your description of your projects. Um, and just checking into your resume to see, you know, how many shows you've been involved with. But certainly, uh, it, even if you're an emerging artist and you have a very strong um, work sample, whether or not you have representation does not impact whether we accept you or not. Um, are artists able to go on short residencies while maintaining a studio at EFA? Bill, do you want to take that one? I can unmute it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the way this works, because there are many programs, I know even, I, I didn't realize that, but I think Chishama, you're not supposed to go on another residency. But we have artists here. Uh, we have one artist who's been here since 1998, because you get in, if you get in through this process, 
you're uh, you're here for two years if if you want to be, and but then you can apply for renewal for another two years, and there's no limit to how many times you can apply for renewal. So we have one artist who was part of the original group who came in in 1998. She just keeps getting renewed every two years. So consequently, if somebody's going to be here that long, you can't say, and you can never go on another residency. I say we're really here to help artists. Our rule of thumb is you're not supposed to be out of the studio more than three months out of the year. So, uh, I mean, that's become a problem. Some of the artists who have not been renewed, it's very often because the way their career has taken them, they're gone seven months out of the year doing shows or you know, doing other things. And you can't be gone that much. And even the three months is flexible depending on if you, one of the artists who's been here for many years and they come to me, oh, I got this incredible thing and it's four months, uh, you know, we, we can be flexible. But ju just rule of thumb, uh, it's really like three months, uh, it, it, you really shouldn't be doing more than that. Yeah, and again, because the program is uh, so invested in supporting artists, what we do pride ourselves in doing is really speaking with each of you individually and helping to tailor the program to your needs as well. And so being somewhat flexible and being responsive to artists' needs is something that we really want to make sure that it happens. So it's not, again, the, the benefit of the studio program is not just a fantastic studio, but it's really, you know, having a caring community of thoughtful practitioners who also are artists and also know what's going on and try to you know support everybody as best we can uh so that's that's one of the benefits i see beyond uh just having a studio so it's a, it's a really fantastic program and i um i hope to see all of your applications um in the submittable very soon uh let's see if there's a, if there's not any other questions, I think we can kind of wrap up because, um, and again, if you have specific questions, like maybe there's something that you really forgot to address, um, I'm putting my email right here in the chat. Um, so feel free to email me with any questions that you have. Um, I, I cannot review your application in advance, but if you have a specific question, about uh, you know image size or other protocols, uh, you know feel free to reach out. Um, and again, if you know people who would like to apply, please share it out because uh, it's not competition. It's I mean it is a competition, but it's not really. I mean I love to have I just say spread it out. You never know um, who will benefit from this opportunity. So uh, I invite you all to apply. And yeah. Bill, you have any closing words? No, th thanks for doing this, Natalia. This was great. I I'll just say it. I'm not saying I've been here 10 years, and uh, Natalia's it's like eight years. We've both been doing yeah. this for a while, but uh, it's really an extraordinary community. And as Natalia said, uh, there are many things about being in the middle of Manhattan, the, the visiting professionals, our big open studios. There's a lot of great things about the program, but I really do think the community, the fact that you are surrounded by other serious artists, uh, like all the artists in the building are exhibiting and, and active and extremely generous with each other. Uh, I do think that probably is the best thing about it. Yeah, I, I've heard it being called like sort of like a grad school <laughs> right. you know, without the school part, That's, you know. So everybody does get together. We have like a lot of just amazing artists in the building who share with each other and, um, you know, it's, it's feeding, it's a, it's a wonderful space. Um, and thank you all for coming. Yeah. So, oh, the last last question, and then um, I think we'll all say goodbye. Says, uh, not a, you, says, hi, you mentioned not including your name, but the image details ask for your name on each image and on your resume. That's fine. It, it, it's just for the, the slideshow. So when we project your images, uh, the image details do not go with it. So as long as your name is not on the image, you're fine. Uh, but having your name on the resume, I read it out loud. So I will pull up and the resume. I actually read people ask me questions and then I answer them. But the, the panelists do not see your name. So everything goes through the filter of me.
<laughs> um, but yes, it's totally anonymous. I'm the human filter. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you everybody. You have such a wonderful group. I really appreciate all of you for your great questions and uh, come find us on the website. Come find us if you need to email myself or Bill. Um, and again, I hope to see all of your applications very soon. Thank you. Uh, ciao, ciao, everyone. Bye. Bye. I'm going to copy this question. It's so good. <laughs>